great forces of darkness fall upon Gondor, which consists of Isengard and Harad. But defending this beautiful Gondorian settlement is Rohan. And my only question is, where's Gondor? Where was Gondor? Oh, wait. Oh, they're right here. Oh, okay, so Rohan and Gondor are going to be fighting together in this magnificent, beautiful, epic, close siege battle that I know you guys will enjoy. So, of course, if you enjoy these types of battles, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And let's go ahead and get this battle underway. All right, guys, here we are with the start of the battle. And right away, we have Harad advancing some very deadly looking infantry. These units are called Haradrim Usurpers. And uh, yeah, they look, they look awesome. They look deadly. They are advancing some ladders to the walls. And waiting for them, we have the forces of Gondor. So they have some infantry, some Gondorian infantry ready to hold now i'm a little i'm a little confused by this tactic right here so they're sending these two units they've got a unit of bows in the back but that's it so if they actually commit here with this force i just feel like they're not going to get a lot done because i mean mo if now what i would do is i would send these troops in first attack this area then send the two units but oh hold that thought we do have a sally out by rohan so here's our first view of the rohirrim and they are sallying out look at that they're going to charge the infantry to slow them down and to prevent them from scaling the walls and this other unit is now, oh, oh, I knew it, I knew it. This sly dog, he's going for the archers in the back. Uh, these archers have nowhere to go. Behind them is just a red line, which might hurt, that actually might hurt Rohan because they're not gonna have as much area to maneuver. The archers stand their ground like chads as they just get charged. They're like, hey, your archers are out of position and I'm going to charge them. Epic, you know, epic Chad archer, archer mode. I know, you know, <laughs> whatever, who cares? I don't care. Um, but yeah, this is a, this is a little, uh, a little bit of an issue for Harad and it, well, they are sending over one unit of infantry, but more umbar. Oh, not Haraj. Okay, I'm sorry. This unit's called Umbar Usurpers, not Harajum Usurpers, but close enough. Uh, but they are also sending over some Serpent God. Look how awesome these guys are. Oh my goodness. Just looks so cool. Really good unit. At least if they're anything like the Serpent Guard from uh, Third Age, they're a very good unit. <laughs> So they're gonna rush over and sure enough, Rohan's like, uh-uh, I don't want any piece of that. I'm gonna fall back, let's go. Which is smart, he's conserving his troops, he's not being reckless with them. And he did not kill the archers, see, they don't care. They still have, how many do they have? 75, so they're still a threat. Like, they're still healthy enough to be a threat and get a lot of kills. But back over here, they also retreat, they fall back from the attack on this infantry. But meanwhile, they've committed their other infantry here into the fight. And man, their armor is so shiny, it makes Gondor look just not shiny. <laughs> so as that is going on, nothing else is happening. Well, actually, cancel that. We've got two units of Muhad, uh, Muhad, Muhad, Muhud, Muhud, Muhad, Beast Tamers. So these are the really cool, like, uh, painted warriors. I mean, they look awesome. Look at this face paint. Look at this guy. He's like, yeah, you think it looks pretty cool? Yeah, I was up till like four in the morning painting my face. I'm like, okay. Uh, but yeah, they, they have taken the walls, but are not doing anything with it. Uh, Gondor is just like, yeah, you can take the walls. We don't care. You know, they, they're just sitting here. So I don't know. I guess they're going to wait for them to run down the steps. Um, but yeah, Isengard's still really far away um, from the siege. The rest of the Haradrim really far away from the siege. So 
I think they're really doing... I, I'm just not a fan of this maneuver here. And now we have the other unit. Uh, this is a unit they sent over a while ago. So they're going to now charge this wall with three units of Umbar Usurpers. Uh, they still have not charged them in yet. Gondor might have to send up reinforcements, which they are. Oh, look at this silver fox right here. Hey, he's, not he's not too much of a silver fox. He's got some grays there. Got some grays, but he's still a young lad there. Thick, full head of hair. But yeah, he's going to go in and um, he's going to help defend here against this uh, extra unit. But even with three units of Umbar Usurpers, this is not going to be enough to claim this wall. You're going to have to send a lot more. Or what you're going to have to do is attack elsewhere and try to lighten the defense over here, then attack it. Oh, uh, and then here comes the Serpent Guard. They're going to actually leave the area. They're like, all right, well, uh, good luck, Umbar Usurpers. We're out of here. No, they come back. Just kidding. You know, <laughs> we're here. So they're going to hold their position. I, I guess they're a little worried about the Rohirrim Cav. I think they're waiting for all this infantry to get up on the ladders. But again, I, I think you're missing out on using the fullest potential of this unit. I think this unit could have been very deadly. I mean, they look super professional. And through all my years of playing Total War, when a unit looks really cool, they are usually always awesome. Okay? These guys look really cool. Uh, still nothing going on here. We've got another unit of Muad Beastmen scaling the towers, but no advancement, no maneuvers by the Haradrim. Isengard is finally advancing up their infantry without their towers, so we'll see what they're doing with these guys. But for now, it's just a fight for these walls. And it's a uh, it's a brutal one. I mean, if I'm if I'm Gondor, you might want to send up some archers to just open fire from the flank. You know, maybe not use all your ammo, but just get a couple shots there because the faster you can kill these guys, the better. The more lives you'll save, and then you can free up all this infantry to go to you know this side of the defense. And that's again, that's the biggest issue with these wave attacks. If Gondor was getting attacked all over the place, the player commanding Gondor would have to micro everywhere, and he would also just have to spread his defenders everywhere. Uh, so it'd make it way more challenging for him. But this is ideal. Now the soldiers can focus their attention on one side of the wall, and once they deal with it, they can move to the other. Well, guys, a few minutes have passed, and Isengard is on the march. They have now sent up some infantry through the siege tower, so they are attacking the other side of the settlement, which is where mostly Rohan is uh, positioning their army. You know, I'm sure the defenders were like, okay, you know, all right, Gondor, you know, what? who do you want to face? Do you want to take on Harad or uh, Isengard? And, and you know Rohan was like, you know, hey, Pair me up with Isengard, okay? We've got some unfinished business to do. You know, so that that is why he's taking on Isengard. And yeah, Isengard is going to send in their Urukai. The Urukai. Oh, man, look at the lighting. This, The lighting of this battle is just top-notch. Also, you can see in the background, they have uh, destroyed the gate to that side. Now, why does the ram explode and then disappear when destroying the gate? I don't know. It's just a convenience thing. They're like, ah, we don't want to have to animate it. You know, them taking it back, putting it aside, you know, whatever. I don't, I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of silly. You know, one thing that it really frustrates. Oh, by the way, a wall has just crumbled. Thanks to the catapult back here from Isengard. And I think they're going to go ahead and uh, change targets. I think they're going to try to bring down this wall as well. They also have a unit of um, pikes watching this flank. The only thing I the only thing I can think of, of why they're doing this is that there's a gate. Yeah, there's a gate over here in Rohan. Could oh yeah, they've got Cav. That's definitely an option. That's definitely an option. So we'll see how that plays out. But uh, still, so far at this point, 
Still, the only uh, the only battle really going on here is over on this wall. And you can see that Gondor is winning this battle. This unit here has 53 kills. That's not very good. Considering the skill and the price of this unit. You want them to be getting more kills than that. They are professional soldiers. This is not an ideal situation for them. Now, of course, the battle has begun elsewhere as well. Because Isengard is now attacking. Sending up another unit of Urukai. As they brutally scratch, slash, shield smash their way through this Rohirrim defense. But honestly, I think Isengard is going to need more men to break through here. Especially, oh, especially with those arrows. What is this? This is the Garrison of Hornburg. Who is just kind of popping some shots and uh, trying to kill him from afar. Now, over here, oh, yeah. 90, let's watch this. 96%. Come on, one more. One more, baby. Let's go. Hit this wall. They've got enough ammo. Man, it's insane. It doesn't require much ammo to destroy these walls, which I actually kind of like because I want this, you know, I don't, I don't like it when it takes like five hours to destroy a couple breach points. There we go. Wall destroyed. Oh, and uh, the icing on the cake. The extra shot lands on these axe stains and kills a good good amount of them look at they're down they lost 10 men from that one shot i believe that's that's crazy that is crazy now one thing i i hate about attila are the ladders i mean this is ladders you know this is it, it's in rome too as well i want ladders like in medieval 2 total war why was that so difficult like just have a unit carry ladders and then once they get to the wall they you know they angle the ladders onto the walls and it would be cool. Oh, is this a Sally? No, no, no. This is Harad. Harad is pushing through the gate. So now they are finally attacking on this side. But they are met by a wall of spears from the Fountain Guard. So good for good for Gondor. They're now forming a V here. Kind of an off-centered V. To see if uh, Isengard goes for it. But again, the attackers are being very patient here. I personally am not a fan of dipping your toes in the water. I am definitely a, the type of player is like, once you commit, you commit to the fight. You send everything you got and you overpower the defenders, you know? But consider this. They have unlimited time. Oh, here comes a charge. Nice. Wide hand stormers going in. This is a... This is like Urukai, but better. So they are met by the Axe Thanes. And now we have another unit of Eerling Retainers. And they are taking on these Stormers. But these guys are really good. They might be able to fight through this, potentially. But they might need some support. Oh, arrows coming down. Very nice for uh, from the Hornburg. Hornburg Defenders, is that their name? Oh, Garrison of the Hornburg. Pretty cool name. Pretty cool. Is this another archer unit? Yep. I think it's a different unit though. Yeah, Yeoman of the of the Mark. That's man, they look so cool. The units here look so awesome. And now we've got another unit of Fountain Guard. The Fountain Guard. <laughs> They're moving up and uh helping the Oh, this is like oh dude. Are you, is this the Golden Hall? The troops of, here, hold on me. Oh yeah, no, Fountain Guard. Yeah, guards of the Golden Hall. Imagine being an Urukai and you not only have to get through Fountain Guard, but the guards of the Golden Hall. You're like, you know what, screw this. And that's why the player, you know, he ordered his men to retreat because uh, yeah, screw that. The Fountain Guard are now switching over Oh no, they're gonna switch over and help out over at this breach point. And this is another reason, guys, that you want to attack on multiple breach points. It's gonna make the fountain guard have to pick a breach point, not be able to maneuver around and, and stop each wave attack. You know what I mean? So uh, amazingly, way back over here where the battle started, they are still trying to take care of these Umbar usurpers, which this unit has 64 kills. 
which is not great. Which is not great. Uh, considering that they had 140 in the unit, they're down to 83, and they only have 67 kills. So they're not getting a good KD ratio. <laughs> Which, you know, a KD ratio is not something you should um, worry about all the time. But, you know, it is important that expensive units get a lot of kills. Well, 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 look at this. So we fast forward a little bit as there really hasn't been too much of a crazy progress here. Oh, jeez, that's violent. Uh, the Urukai went in for a charge. And they have the golden, the guard of the golden hall and the fountain guards. Two epic guard units on each side. And then they have archers firing right at the center. That's just a deadly, deadly combo. Now over on this side, Isengard once again is pushing. And that's forcing the fountain guard to pick and choose. So they're going to come over and join the fight. This is now the time where you send in more troops. Send in more troops because the Fountain Guard are going to have to have a lot to defend. Pretty cool shot here. You can see the, the siege towers in the background through the destroyed gate. Looks cool. Now, this wall has been destroyed as well. Um, they used the Onager to destroy it. Which uh, makes things complicated. And it does look like Harad is sending in some infantry through the breach. They're going to try to put some pressure. This is good to see that the attackers are trying to use as many breach points as possible. They have to. They, it's the only way you're going to break through this defense. Isengard sending in more Urukai. Mindless orc. <laughs> and yeah, uh, over here, they finally defeated the forces that initiated the siege battle. The Umbar Usurpers. Uh, they've taken them out without losing too much. I mean... They, of course, Gondor lost infantry. You know, this one has 111 out of 40. This unit here, uh, 59 out of 140. But it was worth it. It was worth it. They just wiped out three deadly units without losing too much to them. That's huge. And I love, I love the fact that over here, these beast tamers, <laughs> they're just straight up chilling. They're like, look at this guy. He's like, mm. Did I do my face paint kind of stupid? I kind of look like a clown. And he looks over, he sees Steve. He's like, I kind of like Steve's stripes there. And Steve looks pretty cool. I look kind of dumb. Let me let me look at Peter next to me. Oh, Peter just copied me. Ah, no. <laughs> and then meanwhile, Gondor is just like, hey, are you still up there? Are you lost or something? You need help? Like, yeah, why, why don't you come up to us? It's like, well, you're attacking us. You should come down to us. It's like, well, no. Yeah. <laughs> where, are you lost? He's like, yeah, we don't know where to go. Okay. Well, just meet me at the stairs. Use the stairs. I don't What's happening? Uh, let's go back over to this side, though, and see that, um, uh, amazingly, the Urukai are still fighting up here. They're still fighting up here. And then down over on this side, again, it's just been a very patient game. This is why I'm a fan of having an hour timer. Because it kind of forces players to get the attack going. And I, I'm not complaining. I'm still... This is a really entertaining battle. This is like, I'm really enjoying this. Because it's different. It's definitely slower paced. And the reason it's slower paced is because they have unlimited time. Now, the timer you see here is the battle replay. Uh, so, yeah, this is so there's 40 minutes left in the battle, but they had unlimited time, and that is why the attackers are taking their time. So, I'm really, really interested to see how this one plays out. Are they going to commit here? Yes, they are. The Urukai. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Well, after a few more minutes, it does appear that the attackers, uh, Isengard and Harad, it, they're finally putting pressure, a lot of pressure, on the defenders. They've sent up some serpent spearmen. They are trying to overwhelm this breach point. They're using crossbows. Very nice play here by Isengard. Using Urukai crossbows to fire through the gap. 
I think they were harassing the fountain guard, which are down to 106. So they killed, hey, they killed four of them. I mean, that doesn't sound like much, but one fountain guard is very scary. Now down the street, uh, they are now pouring in infantry. This is Harad, by the way. Harad is really committing a lot of troops to this battle. And oh, great positioning. Great positioning by the garrison of, of the Hornburg who have a back shot firing at the rear of the, what are these, serpent, serpent spearmen who are attacking this breach over on this side. You see how the arrows are just coming in and hitting these guys. Not a fun situation to be in if you are a serpent spearman. Now, if we look over here, we do have some units outside the settlement. Rohan has pushed up a unit of Westfold uh, Axe um, Cav. Uh, looks like he's just being patient. He's waiting for the attackers to get tunnel vision. Maybe he can sneak in the Cav and kill some vulnerable units. But at the same time, guys, at the same time, Rohan has two units of Cav outside on this other side as well. So he might be going in for a Sally Out sandwich which is my favorite sandwich. Uh, by the way, if if a Sally Out sandwich sandwich existed, what would be the sandwich? What, what would you Let me let me know in the comments down below. A Sally Out sandwich. <laughs> what like what types of meats, you know, toppings? What would you put on a Sally Out sandwich? Would it just be the meat outside of the bread? <laughs> like here's your Sally Out sandwich. <laughs> That's stupid. Anyways, I'm just I'm just stupid. Uh, but yeah, uh, more and more forces moving up, and you can see. Oh yeah, even in the center, look at this. They're even able to sneak through a gap, and they are now getting deep into the ranks of these archers. They might do a lot of damage here. And yeah, this poor guy, come on, get up. Yeah, if I get knocked up. Knock, no, if I get knocked out, I get up again. Knocked up is something else. Okay, anyways, uh, they're fighting a good fight. They're ha Oh, and here comes infantry joining the fray. Yeah, Rohan is not having his archers die like that. And the uh, guards of the Golden Hall once again holding uh, in a very epic fashion as the Fountain Guard aid them from the flank. This is definitely, they're going to rack up a lot of kills here, but I'm so happy to see that Isengard is making such a bold push. Oh, oh, now we've got, oh, yeah. Now we've got these deadly two-handed sword guys, which I cannot pronounce. They look awesome. Look at these guys. What the heck? This might be an opportunity for them to clear this out. You know what I would do? I would send in this baby Mooma kill over here. So baby Mooma, it's a placeholder. Uh, hopefully they can make some very large Mooma kill. But now might be the time to send in the elephants because they wouldn't expect it. And by you clearing out this pathway, you could run down these archers. You could, you know, move infantry and flank and get the fountain guard and then run down the street and help out the units here. Like, you just need to break through somewhere. And once you do, you will save lives and you'll destroy. You'll kill a lot of the defenders. Now, over here, uh, the two armies are having yelling matches, I guess. Like, hey! Hey! You guys still up there, you bunch of cowards? It's like, well, you're the coward. You're staying down there. It's like, well, you attacked us. We've been through this. Oh, yeah. All oh, right. We've been up here for so long that we thought this was our new city. We've established, you know, roads and a form of government up here. I don't know what's happening here. I mean, I get it though. I understand why they're holding back their units because what I, I, I assume what the attackers are trying to do is they're trying to win here first, hoping that some of these units will peel off and go deal with the victorious attackers. And that would make this defense a little bit softer for the attackers, but we'll see. We'll see. Let's go back over to the front lines though and see how this is progressing. Oh my God, there's just blood everywhere. Urukai. Yeah, there's still the Urukai have now joined. Before there were serpent spearmen, but I think they broke. So they're really trying to put a dent into this defense. And then back over on this side, uh, Gondor is having a tough time of managing this random rush of Urukai infantry. But they are doing a pretty decent job. 
I think, honestly, right here is the weakest point of the defense. This is the best chance for the attackers to break through. They can get through these Axemen and Swordsmen. And I think they know it, too. Because we're seeing arrows come in, too. I think they realize, hey, let's soften this up and then we can break through. Oh, Gondor has sent over some reinforcements. Look at this. Oh, yeah, Gondor Swordsmen coming to... See, they know. They know. They've come in to reinforce. They're coming to reinforce. I think they're going to try... Oh, yeah, they want to save their Fountain Guard. Because the Fountain Guard are losing numbers big, bigly. They're losing... They're, they're down to 73. They've almost lost 40 men. This is huge. Huge for the attackers. This is what they needed here. Well, after a few more minutes... Uh, uh, three, two, one. Well, guys, after a few minutes, Rohan has been... Uh, uh, well, they've activated their cap. They've given the order to march forward their cap. Look at this battlefield here. This is so cool. Oh, my God. This looks sick. This looks awesome. I mean, you could just see... The settlement and they're like how dare they how dare they attack our settlement so uh yeah they are uh they are ready to hold they're ready to do something i mean if you look closely guys and by the way there's cav oh yeah there's cav on this side too it's getting shot at by artillery i believe so the defenders are, i'm sorry the attackers can see this they they see their cav so he's not going to go for it. He's going to fall back. But what is he going to do with the other cap? Is he going to send them in? Because there is a ripe target of crossbows. Yes, there is. Look at this. Look at the officer. He's like, charge. So awesome. If he goes for it. No, he turns away. Oh, there's infantry going after them. Still, it's worth it. You got to go. I mean, there's three units of archers here. Get them. They've got a lot of ammo, too. You got to get them. What about the other calf? Is he going to try to play a little diversion there? No, the calf's just chilling there. Man, that just seemed like a wasted opportunity. Now they're getting shot at, the, at, uh, at their backs from the crossbows. I think he killed. He could have killed a lot of cross was there if he didn't hesitate he should not have fallen back i think he had plenty of time to do a lot of damage there then fall back uh but let's see what happens with this other calf is he gonna send in this other calf or is he just, oh i guess he's just gonna keep him back well while that's going on the fight for the inner walls is still going on uh the gate looks like it's nicely well it's well it's been secured a very very good job by Rohan and Gondor. They rallied some forces and they secured this gate. Now, are the Fountain Guard gone at this point? Or did he fall them back? I'm not sure. Over on this side, this is the biggest issue. Oh, here's the Fountain Guard. They are low. They're down to 24. But yeah, these guys... Oh, no. Oh, no. The attackers are winning here. They are winning here. They've got these double-handed sword Or two-handed... Double-handed. Two-handed swords... They have broken through. Yeah, keep pushing. Go for the Fountain Guard. You might not want to charge them head on. But there's so many of them. They could probably wipe them out. Oh, dude. Oh, that was epic. That guy just like, be gone, Fountain God. Uh, and here comes Gondorian reinforcements. Oh, here comes the calf. He did charge in his calf. Knights of House Ero. 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 Anyways, uh, they, they charged in their calf. But they charged them into infantry. I'm not sure. Not sure why. Why commit your cav over here into infantry when you didn't commit them into crossbows? And, and the cav has fully retreated back into their settlements. Ah. ah. Dang. Dang, dude. That's too bad. Thought they could have done something there. But the attackers still, you know, Isengard still pushing troops through this breach. There's soldiers fighting within a... With rubble. They're fighting literally in rubble. And more infantry breaking through here, but... Uh, maybe this was like a sacrificial charge? Like, maybe this Rohirrim here charged in because they didn't want any more infantry to to flow into this breach point or support their breakthrough because Gondor just... Yeah, he just reclaimed it. 
Like, they just reclaimed this breach when they were breaking not too long ago. So maybe that's why they charged in the cav. That might be why. Still no assault over on this side. The fight continues to take place all over here. Literally, 100% of the fight is right here. Well, by this time, fresh defending troops... Or, I'm sorry, fresh attacking troops have sent in a new wave of attacking units to once again try to reclaim these choke points. I mean, this has been a bloody, bloody fight. And look at all these units coming in. They're even sending archers. Both sides sending in archers. So if we zoom out, you can see that they're running out of troops here. They mostly have archers left. They got a general over here. But a lot of this infantry is very, very wounded. They could break at any time. And this, this right here, this is a problem. If these elephants go in, they are going to probably kill everything here. Why? Because a lot of these archers are out of ammo. This one's at half, which is pretty good. But this one's at almost out of ammo, uh, which they can't use against the archers. Got some archers out of ammo over here. And a lot of these units are already on the verge of cracking. So if he sends in these elephants now, I think they could do a lot of damage. Back over here, Gondor is being stubborn. They are not sending in, sending over any extra reinforcements over to this side. It looks like right now he just decided to send over a unit of Gondor sword infantry to support the other side of the fight. Look, they're cheering for him. They're like, get them, boys. Good luck over there. You know, these guys don't even see what's happening. They might think they're they're winning this battle. They're like, ah, we're probably going to win. You know, we don't... No, you're not. You're losing this battle because the attackers are breaking through. And all this infantry is about to crumble. I mean, it's that weak. This defense over here is on the verge of crumbling. And this is not good. Not good for the defenders. The attackers are loving this. Can we please... Can we please get the, the Muma kill in there? Get them in there. I want to see them in action. I'm thirsting for it. Oh, now they're using fire arrows. Now they're trying to break... Oh, I, I see. They're trying to, to light this on fire. Oh, let's see if this... Be oh, he's still got ammo. Oh, he still has ammo. Is he going to go for, like, right there? Oh, no. He's just... Why is he... What are you going for? I guess the archer... Use flaming shot. Set this town aflame. Remember, Attila, you can burn down the, the town. And uh, it does a lot of damage. Yeah, I don't know what he was trying to do with that artillery shot. Maybe he's... Yeah, there we go. Can you... Can you... Yeah, there we go. I think he's just hitting buildings, but... Yeah, he should try to try to get this these units over here. Take them out. Oh, look at this. Gondor sending over the Prince's Coast Guard. Now that might be... With the Prince's Coast Guard gone... No, they're still not going to attack. They have their cav. They've got... They've got a lot of these... Deadly infantry back here. Uh, Isengard has some berserkers that they have yet to see any action. The ton of chevrons. Still no... I I would be... This has just been a, a slow burner of a battle. I mean, it's just been a fight in one area for the entire time. Now, though, is the time. Now is to send in those berserkers. Now is the time to send more of those two-handed sworded units. Get them in this fight because Rohan is not going to hold here much longer. It's mostly archers that are holding the front line. They have no ammo. They have nothing. They can't hold against professional troops like berserkers or whatever. Get the get the Muma kill in there too. And also, what is this? Oh, we have grenadiers as well. What? Get these guys in the fight. More Urukai pikes. Like, I would just overwhelm this front. And are they? Oh, I see. Are they preparing a fallback? Or are they? I think they're just chilling. They're just waiting for their, for their time to shine. There we go. Here comes another unit. All right, the first unit of berserkers going in. 
we'll see them in action pretty soon. Now back over on this side, still nothing. The patience of a saint over here from the attackers. Uh, it does look like they have some crossbows here. Maybe he's trying to use the crossbows, trying to set up the angle and getting some shots on the enemy. I mean, killed a couple over here. I don't know. How did these guys die? These two soldiers, like, these, these are your brothers. Like, shouldn't you, like, at least take them away? They're just chilling here, and you're just looking at them. Like, somebody pick them up and get them out of there. <laughs> so here comes reinforcements over on this side. Uh, we've got Urukai infantry, which I think they actually took away from over here. Yeah, he's moved him from over here. He's going to fight over on this front, which honestly, I like that move because they just need to conquer this, this section. Uh, the attackers are on the verge of conquering it, and they just need to concentrate all of their forces, send in the gr the grenadiers, the Urukai grenadiers, send in the pikemen, send in the Mumakil, and you will take this settlement. And my goodness, imagine being a fresh troop and seeing all the dead troops here. Just thinking, my goodness, like this has been hell of a battle, just a hell of a fight. Berserkers doing a great job there. Really slicing through. Oh, here comes another unit of Berserkers mixed in with pikemen. Oh, you're done, son. You're done. Now, what are the defenders going to do? Are they just going to hold here? They've got a lot of fresh troops. Gondor Swordsman. We have the uh, Prince's Coast Guard. We have archers that have pretty much full ammo. So they're going to rush over and try to reinforce that front. It's getting weaker over here. Oh, Rohan charging out. Yeah, let's go. Rohan charges out and gets the Urukai crossbows. We have Gondor infantry that charged out and kind of got in the way of their own teammate there with their cav. I don't know if the look at this. The infantry is pouring out. You know what? It, yeah, I like this move, actually. I like this move. Oh, these guys look cool how they set up their shields like that. But what I would do, send one of these units over here to help with this cav. Kill this crossbow unit really fast. Then quickly send over units and attack behind this unit. And that's going to free up the infantry fighting over here, which you could then move over to this front and support the fight over near in this narrow road near the gate. Uh, I think they got to do something drastic like that. I, I really think the, the defenders have to get aggressive. Now we've got some Prince's Coast Guard joining the fight, which will definitely put this fight in their favor, and the Berserkers will not have enough strength to break through, which is why they break. Mumakil still sitting back. We still have some White Hand Stormers sitting back. We've got Pikes sitting back. Get them in the fight. Get them in the fight. Here we go. Now we've got infantry moving forward. What are they doing here with these berserkers? I don't know, but they're going for an infantry fight for the outsides of the walls. It looks awesome. And up here, the archers just used up all their ammo. This is a really good spot, really good angle for them. This looks really cool too. Look at that. Watching over the battlefield thinking what's gonna happen. Do we have enough to hold? We'll find out soon enough 13 minutes left in this battle who is gonna take it the brave Gondorians fighting in the outskirts of their town trying to hold back these monstrous berserkers, but it's a tough tough fight Crossbows sitting in reserve. They're not really sitting in reserve. They're active uh, Firing at the forces of Rohan and they're probably chipping away at their numbers I mean, this is just like, yeah, just fire away. Get some kills. And thankfully, Gondor is going to fall back here and reorganize. Now, hey, look, they finally, they finally attacked. But, geez, this is, uh, this might be a, a bad place to attack. These Fountain Guard are going to chew up these, uh, these Beast Tamers. Look at the officer in the front. He's like, I will fight in the front up close. 
I assume that's the officer. That or he just dropped his pike and he's going in with his sword. Come on, get a kill. Uh, the, oh, he switched to his pike. That's sly dog. That's sly dog. <laughs> Is this another fountain guard? Oh, they still have a lot of fountain guard. They could still win this battle. Yeah, this... I don't know. It, the balance of power... is in favor of the attackers, but... Oh, this is not good. See, this is what I'm talking about. The Prince's Coast Guard is now turning their sights onto the Urukai Pikes, and they're left stranded alone. Why aren't they getting support? They have infantry here in reserve. I mean, seriously, look at They've got the swordsmen here. They've got cav. They've got uh, grenadiers. Why? Ooh, I don't know, guys. This is going to be close. Who is going to take this battle? Who's going to take it? Now we've got elephants moving in. The baby Mooma kill. Closing in. Let's see if he uses them. The fight over here is still underway. You can see they're stretching out their units. Trying to use the most of them. Trying to use all of them. Oh, the Fountain Guard are losing numbers here though. And they send in some Gondor swordsmen to support them. Now, while Gondor has been victorious over on this front near the gate, over here, Isengard has made a bold push with pikemen, infantry, and even crossbows who are right in the mix. So they've made some good progress over here. Not saying that it's enough to, to, to win, but they are making progress. Over on this front, they're still pushing in infantry. And I think finally the Muma kill are gonna join the battle. Let's see. They're gonna go in. There we go. This is it. This might be the deal breaker. If they can kill the Muma kill without taking many casualties, I think they can win the battle. If the Muma kill uh, instantly die here, then I think the attackers are are screwed. Now, if the Muma kill go wild and get a bunch of kills, then um, I think this is gonna be over. For the defenders it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a photo finish here it's gonna be really close but the bounce of power is in favor of the attackers as we as we witness the final moments of this battle the fountain guard are winning against these tamers yeah I shouldn't have charged in like that I think he should have waited a little bit longer which is funny because he waited so long over here Uh, now they're pushing through the gate. Look at this. Look at this. Urukai Pikes uh, kind of being protected by these um, serpent spearmen watching the flank as they. Oh, and more units coming through the gate. Look at this. The storm. The White Hands uh, Stormers coming in. And now the Pikes are battling it out. Look at this. Pike v. Pike. That's a lot of Pikes. Oh my goodness, they're pouring in their cab as well. They're doing everything we can. We have Eomir, uh, Knights of the Mark, defending, holding. And if he dies, this defense is over. Back over here, it's a bloody alleyway as soldiers try to hold this narrow street. And contain Isengard. They desperately have to contain Isengard if they're going to win this. More and more infantry coming to support, but they've got to fight through this, this small but deadly unit of pikemen. Amazing. Amazing. Back here, I can't believe it, but Aramir is still holding. Holding back the Muma kill. And now we have Citadel Guard coming in to support uh, Rohan. Just kidding, they're leaving.
Oh. Now the last unit of Fountain Guard stand. Oh, oh no, there's two units of Fountain Guard left. And now the nice use of the Grenadiers. Oh, enemy general is dead. I think that's Aramir. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's that's going to be the deal breaker right there. That is going to be the deal breaker. The defenders are running out of troops. They're running out of troops. They've got a few good solid units, but with the lack of leadership and the mass casualties, their will to fight will be low. These soldiers still fighting the good fight. We still have five minutes left in this battle. It's still enough time for really anyone to win this one. Isengard crossbows getting into position. These fountain guard, I just feel like are inevitably, ine in inevitably going to die. Well, they're being supported by some Gondor swordsmen, so that's good to see. Lots of Urukai in this street, in this square, right by the gate. Oh, they've just broken through the fountain guard over here. The defenders are just throwing whatever they have left into the uh, pot. They try to make this recipe work, but it seems for them, this is a recipe of disaster finally Gondor has broken through those Isengard uh, Urukai pikemen but I don't think it's going to be enough this it's a little glitchy over here with the camera um, but yeah they, they are fighting in the streets it doesn't look like it's going to be enough um, oh, the Mumakil are running wild now. The Athelian Rangers are like, what is this? I didn't know the circus was in town. You know? <laughs> this is no circus. This is a weapon. You know? Oh, ball. My king of the hill impression. Anyways, uh, yeah, they are trying to contain the serpent guard. Serpent guards. But, yeah, all I see here is just a handful of Gondorian troops. I respect the fact that they're desperately fighting to the bitter end. And, oh, now the crossbows are focusing their fire on the fountain guard. Yeah, look at this. They, Gondor's just like, I've given up. I, <laughs> there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do. Oh, my gosh. It's like execution style. Hey, how to take care of Fountain Guard 101. Shoot them. Oh. Oh. What the heck? And back over here. Amazingly, they have not broken through. They've got another general here. He's getting pretty low, though. Oh, the, the Mumakil died. We're down to one. One elephant. So they might actually hold over here, but there's only two minutes left in the replay. So the only way this is going to end is if there's a big route from the defenders or a big route from the attackers. And honestly, guys, by looking at all these troops, I just don't see the attackers breaking here anytime soon. We're less than two minutes away to see who's going to take this one. Again, it looks like it's going to be a clear victory for the attack. Not a clear, definitely close. Definitely extremely close. This was down to the wire for a battle. Um, but I think it's at this point, I think it's clear that the attackers are going to win this one.
Looks so cool over here. Just like these walls and seeing the Gondorian soldiers fight against Urukai, you know? Looks awesome. We're down to the last minute. Less than a minute. 50, 49 seconds. And amazingly, these units are fighting to the bitter end. But guys, you know, I think it's it's clear that there's no way the defenders are going to win this one. So we will fast forward because I don't want to bore you guys with, you know, there they go. They're all breaking. They're all pretty much breaking. And bada bing, bada boom. Five seconds. There you go. A Pyrrhic victory for Harad but a victory nonetheless, uh, also with Isengard. Let's end this replay and look at the stats here. So this was sent in by everyone here, <laughs> which is kind of funny to say that because it's like, that is true in a way. Yeah, all the players here in a way sent this in. So everyone here playing as Harad, we have God who was playing as Isengard, Chicken Wolf who was Gondor, and Sir Saint. Uh, who is Rohan. Uh, I'll quickly click on the unit so you can see their kills. But guys, this was a long one. I'm going to need some water and a good nap uh, after that kind of battle. You know what I mean? Hope you guys enjoyed your snacks and drinks while you were uh, watching. And I hope you guys enjoyed the battle. If you did, of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and all that jazz. It does mean a lot. And I will see you guys next time on the battlefield.